Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Peters and I am the owner and lead stylist of The Stylist Abroad. Today, we are going to be teaching you about easy updo extensions and how to use them to create the most magnificent styles with ease, confidence, and efficiency. We today are going to go through how to prep your extensions, how to properly pin them, the different ways to braid them or twist them in. Prepping the extensions is so important. When they come out of the package, they're like this. It's pretty tight and it's pretty condensed. We want them to be a lot fluffier and fuller because that's going to help you blend the extension into the style and it's going to look more like natural hair. This is how you want it to end up looking. Just look at that. Look at that next to each other. So how are you going to get this to become this? Simple. You're going to use either a texture spray or a dry shampoo. If you're going to use a dry shampoo powder, I recommend doing it on the lighter ones, the blondes, because it will dissipate in, whereas on a darker extension, that cast really shows. When we are prepping them, I like to spread it out with my fingers a little bit and do a pump of that dry shampoo. And then really kind of smush it in, it's a technical term, to get all that dry shampoo in there and just helps this to really fluff up. And I just keep working my way down. It unravels, like I'm intentionally unraveling it. It's not gonna just go anywhere on you. But this just allows the hair to get more space and movement to look more natural, which makes it easier for you to blend. A little ways down, I'll add another pump or two as needed. You'll feel it if it's a thing where it's springing back too easily. It's time to add a little bit more product. Then we get to the ends. I do it a little bit, but I don't unravel this completely. We do want those ends to stay where they are because that helps all that twist to stay in place. We see how much fluffier and fuller this is already than when we first had it. And that was even with it being pre-loved. Now instead, let's say that you are using a darker hair extension like this one. You're going to use a dry texture spray um, through like an aerosol. The reason why is it doesn't leave a cast, but it's the same technique. I'm still kind of splitting that by getting my fingers through it and doing a spray. You can also use this on the blonde or the lighter colors. Um, there's no reason as to why you can't. Some people prefer one way versus the other, whether it's due to what they have out in their kit and kind of an efficiency matter for that, or just because of the texture, like how it feels in their fingers. But you can really go either way. We're just gonna get this last one. Now, if you're looking at it and you're like, but I want it to be even fluffier, I want it to be pulled out even more, that's okay. We can always do that once it's attached to the head. You really can't fluff them or prep them too much. Since they are created with an inherent twist in it, they do like to spring back and that's great but also, also allows you to go in there and really kind of fluff them out as they're attached. So just remember, always, always, always prep before any of those styles. We're gonna show you how to do an updo with one extension, two, and three. This doll head, we're going to do just a one easy updo extension. And as you can see, she's really short. One of the amazing things about easy updo extensions is they can be used on such short hair. Hair that otherwise you would never think you could actually do an updo with. Hair that is too short to be able to cover like padding or something, which is a very common option. And so instead, since the easy updo extensions, since they can be visible, it's a perfect solution for this. I always keep easy updo extension to where gravity is working my advantage. It is hanging towards the bottom and that way it's not going to get in my way. And then that top part of the elastic, I just twist over. So I'm shortening the amount I have left. And then one more time, it kind of goes around it like three times. So the extensions always twist to the right. I like to twist the new hair, the hair from the head, also towards the right. This will create a really blended look because it's all going the same direction. And then I just elastic off that bottom. So that way I don't have to worry about those ends getting out or anything else. So I am just going to twist off that end where the natural hair 
meets the easy updo extension. And then I bring it up to where I'm literally twisting, kind of pulling it tight. Now when it comes to pinning it, I like to get the natural hair and the extension in, get onto the head, and then go down and diagonal. You could literally either just keep wrapping it around, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's creating a base. It's rather, it's a little bit more simple. Or if you want, what I like to do personally, to make it a little bit more complicated, um, from my experience, I feel like if it's a little bit more complicated, people have a harder time detecting that there's extensions. They can't see, here's a beginning, here's an end point. It all just kind of hides and blends together. So I will bring this up, coming from down from the bottom, up and over. I will pin that in, going again through the easy up to extension, the natural hair, diagonal down. Now this tail, I'm going to actually bring over to this other side of the extension. I slip my topsy tail, which is what this pink tool is, through the easy up to extension. I put the rest of it kind of through that tail and I pull that through. Just be mindful that when you're pulling it through to make sure to be aware of how tight it is. If it's a thing where you need to coax it, you might need to coax it. But don't worry, it will all get through there. And then the same thing, you get back over here and you're kind of like, okay, where do I want to go now? Now for the end, I do get the natural. And again, I go down and diagonal. Just use a little bit of hairspray. So for the back, I am literally just gently gathering my sections and bringing it over where the bun is and doing the most gentle twist to bring that together. Well, holding it there. I bring my body pin, I go behind that twist, scoop up some of that hair, and then we are going to go again, that diagonal and down. Now for the sides, and I am just going to gather and twist as I go, being mindful of kind of how much reach this really has. Do I need to maybe bring some of these shorter pieces and bring them in with the topsy tail later? Possibly. But I just bring it back to where it's at that juncture point. Again, I go behind this twist and I'm going diagonal and down across that way. And then do the same thing for this right side. Gathering and twisting. Okay. You can fluff out this little bun to be whatever shape you would like. For any pieces that are lower to where here logistically you just can't do that diagonal and down, I wrap that hair around the bobby pin, kind of like you're scooping up spaghetti, and then I bring it up as much as I can and try to go like a sideways. Uh, I try to go either sideways or do try to get a little bit of a down action. Now for these wispies, you could always go through and curl them, whether it is like with the topsy tail like this. There's lots and lots of options. They really just depend on what the aesthetic is that you want, what you're going for. But even if you have really short hair, updos can still be an option for you. So if you have a client, especially like someone for a trial, for like a wedding trial, and they're really on the fence about it, they're like, I don't know. They're almost talking about half up, half down looks because that seems like the only option for them. Show them that, but then say like, hey, I think I know a way we can do this and present them with this option. Worst case scenario, they're like, nope, I don't want this. But best case scenario, you now just like blew their mind, you gave them what they really wanted, um, and you introduced them to an amazing new product. So it's always an option. But here we have our really pretty low bun with just one easy updo extension. Next we're going to do is with two. Here our doll head has already been prepped a little bit. We have a braid on this side, some curls here. We're gonna do something really fun. I call this like my modern take on a French twist. We're going to use a texture spray. Just spraying that in there and spreading them out. So first, after we get on prepping, again, we always attach it to that ponytail. And we have our two sections, our two ponytails. In this case, I am going to twist this around the extension and then I'm going to elastic it off and we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. 
Now from here, what you can do is you can create a rope braid. So since we twisted these both to the right, we are going to wrap them to the left. They're already twisted. You just have to wrap them the other direction. Now when you get down to the end, I'm going to use one of the elastics that is already on here. Just conjoin these. You can always fluff it up more if you'd like. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring down her hair from the crown. As I'm gathering it, I'm twisting it. I pinch and pull to bring it up at a little bit more volume. And I'm going to go behind that twist, down and diagonal. And we're going to do the same thing. Get some of that hair down diagonal in the other direction. We essentially are going to be doing two of these big twists that are already here for us. We want this to end right about where the parietal ridge is. I kind of bend it over what I have in place and I get that value pin in, goes behind and stays there. Now we have the rest of this, which I'm just going to bring down here to that base and then pin that in near the base. All this extra, I am just going to twist, 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 and tuck. Now I'm just bringing a body pin in and I can get it into the hair by the scalp. So now we have this cute little French twist. I gather all this, I twist it, going in the same direction, the direction I want it to go, and then I bring it over this at the bottom and then I pin that into place. And then here we have this tail which I'm just going to twist up and kind of put behind the twist we have with our extensions. So now we have this really pretty modern take on a French twist. We have this one that is just curled and this one has a pretty braid on it. I'm going to bring this braid one over and again, I'm pinning from behind that piece diagonal and down. And we're gonna do the same thing with this side. Now with this, I'm just twisting and I'm pinching it out just a little bit because I do like it to have a little bit of a messy texture. So I'm going behind that section, getting that hair, and then going diagonal and down. Now for this, my thought is immediately like, let's see how beautiful this shape is. I'm like, let's bring this up. Let's accentuate that even more. And we can bring it up and around. And in this case, I'm going to bring this piece through here. The topsy tail just allows you to do it and it's a little bit cleaner. So you don't have to worry about like if you have product on your hands or anything else, gunking any of that up or creating more mess that you will have to clean up later. By doing that, it's bringing it over to the same side as that bottom point we had. Again, we're gonna go and get that hair, get some of the hair from the base and then diagonal and down. Now we have this little tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to twist it to like condense it. And I'm just wrapping some of that around that bobby pin. Make sure not to get too much because otherwise your bobby pin's gonna struggle to hold it. Never ever open up your bobby pins. Um, it's just too much hair for that bobby pin to hold. And so now we have this really pretty French twist shape. You can always look from directly behind. I highly advise it. And then you can go through and you can fluff things out as you see fit to kind of redistribute any balance that you need to redistribute. And then as always, a little bit of hairspray. So now we have this super funky, fun, modern take on a French twist with two of our easy updo extensions. Now for our third style, we're going to do with the three easy updo extensions, a boho braided bun. We have our three extensions. As you may notice, one of these is not like the other. The reason why I like to do it this way is because as you may notice, she has a shadow root going on. It is very likely you're going to run into a client who has multiple tones in their hair. And you can kind of take it one of two directions. You can either match only to the base where the rest of the ponytail is, or you can pull in some of those dark pieces down here at the bottom. It is a thing to discuss with them first by bringing it all to that blonde tone. It's all going to be seamlessly the same color. It can look a little bit more simple, a little bit more classic. Um, but by bringing in that darker color down, it does add a lot more dimension. It will make it look like there is more movement, which can make it look more textured, 
more boho. I personally like the more movement. Um, I just think it adds more depth to it. So to each their own, but you have options. I'm using again that texture spray. As a stylist, it is, I feel like critical to have these in your like day of wedding kit because you can bring them with you if a bridesmaid or flower girl or something doesn't have enough hair, you can suggest these and it's an easy purchase, like literally there on the spot. And then that's an easy, you know, profit for you. It's since they are more affordable, it's easy to keep a back stock for you as well. No one in their salon is going to have and the, like the entire gambit of all the colors and the lengths and textures of clip-ins. Whereas with easy up to extensions, you could. So we have our ponytail here. She actually kind of has two, which is fine. We're gonna end up just bundling them together. Bring that whole thing through it. Again, extensions here at the bottom. We want gravity to help us. Pull that elastic up, twist, and gather the rest of that ponytail. I'm going to separate that natural hair into three different sections corresponding with the three sections below it. So what you'll do, we're still twisting it around. Again, I'm going to elastic it off because I just don't want it running away from me while I'm finishing up the rest. We've got our section two of the hair from the head and the extension. Now this is the one that's going to create all that dimension with that darker color and that blonde. Again, we'll elastic that off. And then third, we have that final blonde twist. Again, twist in the direction the extension is going. Final elastic for that one. Now we have our three sections right here. I like to go through, and I definitely like to fluff out the extensions on these ones. This will just help it blend even more. And so when I do this, when I'm fluffing out this part, I'm literally pulling with a small portion and just pulling it up and out. And since I did it to the other two, I'm definitely going to still do it to this one. So we have our three sections. And now we're just going to do a simple three strand braid. I'm bringing my elastic down just a little bit. I'm just going to stretch an elastic that's already in there and just tie off all of this. Now, as you can see, we have this braid with all those colors in it. Now, so for the bun, I'm going to twist up and over, and that creates this nice, big bun base. So from this right side, I'm going from behind our big braid, grabbing some of that hair, grabbing some of the hair that's still attached to like the scalp, and going diagonal and down. I'll do the same thing from here on this left side. So now we have this. I'm always checking our balance. I'm like, okay, we need to bring this all together here. But what a perfect spot to tuck those tails in, and I'm literally pushing them all the way through. I will still pin that in place. Now these little tails, I am just tucking them up and finding a hideaway home for them. I'm pinning them in place there. And then I go back through and I really just fluff it up however I think aesthetically makes sense. But how fun is that? Tons of movement, lots of texture, simple three strand braided bun. And again, I go in, add some hairspray and bring any of those flyaways or frizzies back to that base and that shape. And that's it. It is so simple. So to recap a little bit, always prep your extensions. If they are a lighter tone, you can use a powder dry shampoo. If they are darker, use like an aerosol texture spray to avoid having a cast. You attach the easy up to extension to the elastic that it comes with. You can attach multiples to the same elastic and they're interchangeable through a very easy little clipping system. It's super easy to teach people how to use easy up to extensions. The options really, really are absolutely endless. I wanna thank you all for joining me today. If you think of any questions or anything else, please reach out to easy up to extensions or to me personally. Again, my name is Ashley Peters and my wedding beauty company is The Stylist Abroad. 
We are both always happy to help you in your process as you are creating new looks. And make sure to tag us because we would love to see what you create with Easy Updo Extensions.